Hi everyone, how's it going? All right, so maybe you know my name by now. It's Alicia, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the GRE verbal section. Um, some of this information would be helpful for the SAT or the ACT as well. I'm just gonna be giving you some hints as to how to study, and I'm gonna be giving you a word of the day. Sorry, my room's a bit messy because my um, brother and his girlfriend are staying over because it was my birthday the other day, so I apologize for the mess. Anyway, okay, so a little information about the GRE verbal section really fast. Um, first of all, the GRE verbal section is 30 minutes long, which is, you, you can tell, is fairly short, but it's also 30 questions. That's about a question a minute, exactly, but some will be longer than others. And there are a fair number of different sorts of questions, okay? So there are no particular order, but first of all, you can have six to eight analogy questions, um, five to seven sentence completion or text completion questions, eight to 10 antonym questions, and then two to four reading comprehension passages. And those reading comprehension passages, which you've probably seen on the SAT, if you've taken the SAT, if you haven't, I'm going to explain what those are in more detail in a second, are just gonna be the sort where they give you a long passage and then they ask you questions, usually uh, maybe two to three questions about the passage. So they might ask you a question like, um, in line three, um, heartily, most heartily, most clearly means, and then give you a list of answers, right? And then they might ask you another question where they ask you to explain um, the overall idea of the passage. And then they might give you another question in which they ask you to um, say whether or not the author would agree with the sentiment of another author, something like that, right? So they basically are trying to test whether or not you understood what was being said in a passage. And usually the passages seem fairly challenging because of the vocabulary which is why it's the GRE verbal section, because they're testing vocabulary, okay? So while it's about reading comprehension, it's mostly about reading comprehension because they wanna see whether you understand large words or rare words, okay? So the best way to do well on the GRE verbal, just like the way to do well on the SAT, the, S, the ACT, the GMAT, or any other test that involves words is to know words, okay? so. That's pretty much the whole GRE verbal section. It's gonna be antonyms, analogy, sentence completion, and reading comprehension section. Um, and every sort of question is going to be uh, multiple choice with five answer choices, right? And we already know that's a, a computer adaptive test, right? So it's gonna be on a computer screen, but you do have scratch paper. Um, so if you want, you can take notes. You can write down like one, two, three, four, five for the five choices. And you can say, um, you can scratch out the choices that you know are clearly incorrect, right? Um, well, okay, what I guess I should explain a little bit more in detail what I mean by when I say analogy or reading comprehension or sentence completion or something like that. Okay, so analogy, is very like synonyms, okay? So, perhaps you know what synonyms and antonyms are. A synonym of a word is a word that has the same meaning as that word. So I could say that a synonym of cat is kitty, or um, the word that just came to mind is probably a little bit inappropriate. Um, or a synonym of cold is frigid. Um, a synonym of warm is hot, and so on. Now, you, clearly, you could object that those don't have the same, exact same more meaning, right? Frigid probably means quite a bit more cold than cold. It means extremely cold. Um, hot means a lot more warm than warm, right? Um, maybe gorgeous is evokes an idea of somebody who's a lot more attractive than somebody who you would say is pretty. Hmm? But in general, you would say those words are still synonymous. They have the same meaning, they're not opposites. When you think of somebody who is gorgeous, you would still say that that person is most likely pretty. You wouldn't say that that person is gorgeous, but, well, 
she's not exactly pretty, right? Okay, so synonyms on the GRE are going to be words that have more or less the same meaning. However, it's good to know that on the GRE verbal, they're looking for, for the best answer. So it is possible that of the five answer choices, there could be an analog there could be two words that are analogous. Analogous. But you want to find the one that is the most analogous. So what do I mean when I say this? Well, they might say that like um cold is to frigid, frigid as and then they give you like five options. And they could be like hot is to turgid. Um Clear is to murky. Clean is to filthy. Um, warm is to heated, and so on, right? And so some of those answers might be clearly antonyms instead of synonyms. They might be opposites. But then two of them might actually be synonymous. Now the trick is that you want to see choose the one that is the most analogous, okay, the most similar to the one that's given in the exa example. Does that make sense? And in order to do that, you're go going to want to look for the grouping that's in the actual example given. Now this might seem a little bit confusing, but that's because I'm trying to just give you a quick overview of the verbal section in this video. So I will go over this particular section, the analogy questions, in a different video. So don't worry too much especially since I'm sure this is not the only studying that you'll be doing for the analogy section of the GRE. And if you're studying for a different test, again, don't worry, because you'll do fine. You know what antonyms are, you know what synonyms are, no need to worry. Okay, so the sentence completion or text completion questions. Again, fairly simple. You'll see these on the SAT just as you will on the GRE. Um, they're the sort of questions where they'll just be a blank and you need to be able to fill it in. Now the reason that the, what these are testing is your knowledge of basic things such as grammar. So you might want to be able to fill in the right sort of then, right? So T-H-A-N instead of T-H-E-N. Or it might be that you need to fill in the right punctuation, so on and so forth. We'll go over those in a different video. Um, antonym questions are very similar to the first, the analogy questions, only you're going to be looking at opposites this time. So it could be like cold is to hot as, and then there's going to be five choices, and this time you're going to be looking for opposites. And then the last one, the reading comprehension, is going to be what I discussed when it's giving you a long passage, usually the sort of passage that makes you wish you weren't reading it, usually boring and a little bit dense, and you're going to think, okay, why am I reading this? And then it's going to ask you three, maybe four questions about it probably have two of these sections, so total like six to ten questions in all, reading comprehension. And usually they're just making sure that you can read and analyze a passage, which you should be able to do if you're in graduate school. That's pretty much an overview of the GRE verbal section. And just to end really quickly, I'm going to give you a word of the day, because in order to do well on this section, you want to know vocab, study vocab, please, I promise. If you take a GRE practice test, an SAT practice test, anything, you will realize that the trick to doing well, especially on the GRE, and I promise you, I got a, a really, I did well on the SAT, and when I took the GRE practice test, I realized that the SAT questions are not representative of the GRE practice questions in verbal. They are more difficult. You will want to study your vocabulary for the GRE, I promise. Um, I use a software program, Ultimate Vocabulary, and it's actually really, really helpful, so I recommend that. But I also do a lot of reading, and I write words in the margins that I don't know. However, for today, I'm just going to give you a word that I really like, and it's worth knowing. So, erudite, E-R-U-D-I-T-E, -E, and that means scholarly or very learned, okay? so. When we are trying to get into graduate school, our aim is to become erudite, not pedantic, which is, of course, kind of braggarts about our learning. So again, erudite, E-R-U-D-I-T-E, scholarly, or well-learned. Thanks for listening.